echoes on red sand, the last librarian of Mars. In the shadow of a towering dust storm, the Mars Library stood as a solitary dome on a landscape painted with endless stretches of red sand. Inside, the atmosphere was an oasis, warm, oxygen-rich, a stark contrast to the harsh Martian environment that battered its exterior. Shelves lined with books stretched endlessly, their spines a mosaic of Earth's history and knowledge, meticulously organized and preserved under the watchful eyes of Evelyn Reed, the last librarian. Evelyn, with her silvery hair reflecting the soft light of the library, moved through the aisles with a precision that spoke of years mastering the terrain of texts and tomes. Her suit, though designed for the rough Martian climate, was kept in impeccable condition, a symbol of the order she maintained in a world of chaos. Around her, digital archives flickered to life at the brush of her fingertips, illuminating her face with a pale glow as she checked and rechecked the systems that kept the vestiges of human civilization alive on this abandoned planet. As she indexed a newly restored series of ancient manuscripts, an unusual signal interrupted the library's calm, a signal that hinted at an origin far beyond the confines of the Red Planet. The arrival promised new narratives, secrets of the cosmos perhaps, entwined with the tale of Earth's reach for the stars, a tale that ended here, in the dust and silence of Mars. This was not just another day of solitude. It was the beginning of something that could shatter the stillness that had become Evelyn's constant companion. In this charged atmosphere of mutual curiosity, Evelyn found her role transformed from guardian of relics to ambassador of a vanished world. She felt a renewed sense of purpose, energizing her with each artifact they examined, each story she told. As dusk turned to night, the library, a capsule of human achievement, seemed less like a mausoleum and more like a classroom under the stars, albeit stars far different from those her ancestors had known. Korvek, with each ancient manuscript or artifact, meticulously recorded his observations, his device emitting soft, pulsating lights as it captured data. The respect he displayed for even the most mundane items, a child's toy, a simple tool, revealed his deep appreciation for all facets of cultural expression. Malie, meanwhile, was particularly fascinated by the expressions of human emotion, art, music, literature. She questioned Evelyn extensively about the social and historical context that gave rise to such works. To understand a people, one must understand what they cherished and what they feared, Millie reflected, her voice a whisper among the silent tomes. Zoreth, although their role was security, showed an unexpected interest in human military history and philosophical texts, perhaps finding parallels to their own experiences and the broader ethical questions they often pondered. Your species grappled with many dilemmas that we too face, Zoreth noted, examining a treatise on ethics. There is much we can learn from this. As the night progressed, Evelyn noticed the change in the dynamic. What began as a formal interaction evolved into a genuine dialogue with each party eager to share and absorb knowledge. This exchange, she realized, might well be the last significant act of human sharing on this planet, a final gift to the cosmos from a species that had reached for the stars but faltered on the way. The thought was poignant, but not without hope. If the Thalassians carried these stories, these truths, back to their world, then the essence of humanity would endure dispersed among the stars in a way Evelyn had never imagined. This possibility comforted her as she prepared to show her guests the most sacred part of the collection, 
The Genesis Files, original digital archives detailing the first ambitious steps of human interstellar travel, a testament to the indomitable, explorative spirit that defined her species. As they approached the secure vault, Evelyn keyed in the access code, her hands steady despite the enormity of the moment. Inside, the air was cooler, and the soft hum of the preservation systems added a sacred hush to the room. Here lay the dreams of countless earthlings, encapsulated in bits and bites, waiting to be understood, perhaps to be continued, by minds not of this world. Korvek, Muli, and Zoreth stepped into the vault with a reverence that was almost palpable, their eyes wide with the weight of what this room symbolized, not only for a species, but for interstellar understanding. We are grateful, Evelyn Reed, Korvek said, his voice deep with emotion, for this trust, for this invaluable bridge you help us build today. And as they gathered around the central console, the barriers of species and time seemed momentarily suspended, bound by the common pursuit of knowledge and understanding under the watchful eyes of the distant, silent stars. The Martian sky turned a menacing shade of orange as the warning alarms blared throughout the Mars library, signaling the imminent arrival of a massive dust storm. Inside the library, the air was thick with urgency, the usual quiet sanctuary now a hub of frantic activity as books and digital archives threatened to become relics buried by Martian sand. Evelyn, with her short, silvery hair seeming almost aglow under the emergency lights, coordinated with her unexpected team, the Thalassian archaeologists. Korvek, towering in teal, accessed his device that interfaced with their ship's advanced technology, his large amber eyes focused and determined. We must enhance the structural integrity of the dome, he announced, his voice a calm command amidst the chaos. Mali, her slender fingers swift over her own device, cross-referenced the human architectural data with Thalassian technology. Her deep purple eyes were wide with concern, but underscored by a resolve to protect the repository. Zoreth, Robust and green-skinned, check the security protocols, ensuring that all potential breaches by the abrasive Martian sand were sealed. Evelyn, though initially overwhelmed by the sudden need to rely on alien technology, found her resolve. This was her domain, her legacy, not just as a protector, but as an educator. She brought up the architectural blueprints of the dome on the main screen. Here, she pointed at the structural supports. If we integrate your energy shielding technology with our carbon fiber reinforcements, we might distribute the stress from the storm more effectively. The team sprang into action, each member playing a crucial role. Korvek adjusted their energy barriers to align with the human-made structures. Mamai facilitated her expertise in sociolinguistics, smoothing over any bumps in technical communication between the differing technologies. Together, they reinforced the dome, blending Thalassian energy fields with human engineering. As the storm battered the exterior inside the Mars library, the atmosphere was one of concentrated collaboration. Amidst the howling winds and the swirling dust seen through the dome's transparent panels, Evelyn shared stories of Earth's past storms, of human resilience and ingenuity, her voice intertwining with the gale outside, a testament to the endurance not just of structures, but of spirits united by common cause. When the storm finally abated, Leaving a silence that rang almost as loud as the preceding winds, the dome stood undamaged. The team, exhausted yet bonded by their success, looked around at the preserved books and artifacts. 
Evelyn, her eyes reflecting a mix of relief and newfound respect for her colleagues, knew that this event had irrevocably changed her role. No longer merely a guardian of the past, she had become a bridge to the future, an educator to those who would learn from humanity's vast, tumultuous history. The storm had not only tested their resilience, but had deepened their commitment to preserving the legacies of cultures, both human and alien. Amidst the echoes of clanging tools and whispered discussions, the library slowly regained its former glory, its shelves meticulously reorganized by Evelyn's careful hands with Corvec and Malie always by her side, lending their alien technology and insights. The library's archives, once at risk of being lost to the Martian sands, were now being digitized with the Thalassians' advanced devices, preserving human knowledge against all odds. This process not only safeguarded the texts, but also allowed the aliens to delve deeper into the human psyche, exploring themes of love, conflict, and ambition through literary classics and historical accounts. Discussions between Evelyn and her extraterrestrial guests often stretched into the Martian nights under the glow of two moons. It was during one of these sessions that Corvec presented a comparative analysis of Earth's failed terraforming efforts with a successful Thalassian project on a distant moon. His presentation, rich with data and holographic imagery, offered Evelyn a glimpse into what could have been for Mars. The dialogue fostered a mutual understanding of the delicate balance between technological advancement and ecological preservation a lesson that resonated deeply with Evelyn's own experiences. Mli, with her expertise in sociolinguistics, was particularly intrigued by human expressions of emotion through art and music, elements she found scarce in her own culture. Together, they watched old earth operas and discussed the cultural significance behind each performance leading Mali to organize a small recital in the library. The event, a blend of Thalassian harmonics and human classical music, became a symbol of their growing cultural symbiosis. In turn, Evelyn learned about the Thalassians' complex societal structures and their philosophical approaches to life and death topics that were once abstract concepts to her now enriched by the tangible experiences shared by her new friends. This exchange deepened her understanding of the galaxy's vast cultures, making her once isolated existence on Mars feel part of a larger, interconnected cosmos. Together, they not only rebuilt the physical structure of the Mars Library, but also laid the foundations for a new era of interstellar scholarship and cultural exchange, turning the library into a beacon of hope and knowledge on the desolate Martian landscape. Through their collective efforts, the library was transformed into a sanctuary not just for human history, but for the shared histories of the galaxy, guarded by the last librarian and her unlikely companions. As the last echoes of the spacecraft's engines faded into the Martian horizon, Evelyn Reed stood at the entrance of the Mars Library, her gaze fixed on the crimson sky now empty of the vessel that had briefly disrupted the solitude of her planet. The red sand whispered around her boots, a sonorous reminder of Mars' unyielding nature. Inside the library, the halls were silent again, the air thick with the musk of old paper and the electric hum of digital archives buzzing softly in the background. Each file, each artifact, each volume that Corvec, Mali, and Zoreth had carefully scanned and transferred onto their high-capacity drives represented a breadcrumb in the vast cosmic trail of interstellar history. As Evelyn turned back to the library, her heart swelled with a bittersweet mixture of loneliness and pride. Her life's work, encapsulated in bits and bytes, was now traveling across the stars, a testament to a planet and a people who had dared to reach beyond their grasp. 
What stories would the Thalassians tell of Earth? Would they speak of its beauty, its chaos, the myriad lives that had danced across its surface? Or would they see just another civilization lost to time, a cautionary tale amidst the galaxy's boundless chapters? Evelyn pondered these questions as she walked among the stacks, her fingers brushing against the spines of books that had survived Earth's demise. As the Martian sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the library's geometric patterns, Evelyn considered the enduring nature of knowledge and the interconnectivity of existence. Her thoughts coalesced into a piece of advice, one she murmured to the empty halls. Guard the past, but live for the moment, for every story told is a bridge to another, and no world is ever truly lost if its stories survive. With that, Evelyn ascended to her quarters, leaving footprints on the red dust that covered the library's steps, each a small testament to her existence on this distant, desolate world. In the sky above, stars twinkled, perhaps on some of them, new stories of humanity were just beginning to unfold. <laughs>